Welcome to Like a Star's Flight School. The purpose of this course is to take complete novices and transform them into highly effective dogfighting pilots. Let's discuss the camera first. Look ahead mode is intended to simulate what a real pilot would do in the cockpit. Like when you drive a car, you may look in the direction you're turning instead of straight ahead. You may turn your head to look at a target instead of straight ahead at the reticle. However, simulated head movement is very different from the actual thing. Your brain can compensate very well for real head motion and make your perceived visual image stable even though it isn't. When you drive a car, you don't really perceive your head bobbing up and down. The countless small motions your head makes at rest sitting at a desk are similarly imperceptible. When your character's head moves and your perspective on the monitor changes, your brain does not make these compensations and instability results. Look ahead mode to any degree causes your reticle to move on the screen. Imagine playing an FPS with your muscle memory finely tuned to getting the target into the center of the screen. Now imagine what would happen to that muscle memory if your reticle was moving all over the place. It's hard enough to keep track of the pip and aim at it. Having to keep track of your reticle adds a whole new level of unnecessary complexity. Because of this, I recommend disabling look ahead mode entirely. This will glue your reticle to the center of the screen and help build consistent muscle memory when it comes to aiming. Regarding target zoom, I recommend adjusting this to personal taste. I have not found a tiny amount of zoom to be detrimental. G-force induced head movement. Similarly, G-force induced head movement introduces head bob to simulate your head's inertia in the midst of ship acceleration. This is most noticeable when alternating up and down strafes. It produces perceived movement of the ship and its heads up display. Once again, whereas your brain would compensate for these motions if they were real, staring at a monitor you simply perceive these as disorienting jerks. For these reasons, I recommend turning G-force induced head movement to zero. Audio driven camera shake. The final means to stabilize your character's head as much as possible is to turn audio driven camera shake to zero. When this works correctly, it can cause the camera to vibrate when boosting and jerk in response to incoming fire. Disable this to further reduce disorienting camera movement. G Safe. G Safe is a safety mechanism which limits thruster output to prevent exposure to strong head to toe G forces, which would cause G force induced loss of consciousness, or G lock. As an example, Strong upwards thrust will be limited, as this can produce blackout. Strong downwards thrust will be prevented as well, as this can result in redout. I recommend disabling this safety mechanism. You want the full acceleration potential of your ship available to you in combat. You'll learn to deliberately limit accelerations to avoid G-lock when necessary, or take other measures to mitigate the effects. Such methods will be discussed in a future lesson. Proximity Assist Proximity Assist is similar to G-Safe in that it limits thruster output. Essentially, it'll limit accelerations when the ship is close to other objects or the surface of a celestial body and isn't traveling at a high speed. The intention of this mechanism was to assist pilots in landing. With lower acceleration, it takes longer for a ship to reach higher speed, so it'll maintain a lower speed longer. Lower speeds make landing easier. However, Bringing the speed limiter down will accomplish the same benefits of proximity assist without sacrificing precious thruster output when it may be needed, such as engaging a target at low speed near a space station or asteroid. For these reasons, I recommend turning proximity assist off. Field of view. As you increase field of view, your situational awareness increases, as does your ability to track targets as they approach the extremes of your vision. The cost of this is increased vision warping decreasing the distance uniformity across your screen. This makes flicking to target more difficult. I personally have my field of view set low and escape some of the consequences of this by using head tracking. Motion blur. A post-processing effect that can pleasantly blend frames together. Although I actually like this visual effect, seeing individual frames as clearly as possible improves your ability to perceive and predict a target's motion. This effect also drains subsystem resources. For these reasons, I recommend disabling motion blur. Chromatic aberration. An additional post-processing effect, this simulates the color fringing that might occur with a camera. I prefer to imagine I'm experiencing the game world through my eyes rather than through a camera lens. Turning this effect off 
will also save some system resources. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoy my videos. Also please consider visiting my Patreon page if you'd like to graciously support my future content and earn some cool rewards as a special thank you. If you're interested in the controllers I use and what my curve settings are, please check the description. There you'll also find affiliate links if you'd like to purchase the controllers and support me at no extra cost. If you're looking for a friendly PvP community where skilled pilots offer training opportunities, join the Lycosars PvP Academy Discord link below. If you're interested in joining an elite group of freedom fighters dedicated to combating the tyranny of the UEE and its allies, check out my org's website, libertiesreapers.net. See you in the next one, pilots. Lycosar out.